Hey, how's it going? I got a quick video for you guys today. Today we're going to talk about API versioning in Nest.js version 8, which just got released a couple weeks ago. I have a video about this specifically if you want to learn more on Nest.js 8. But in this video, we're going to focus on API versioning. As you can see, there's three different ways to do it. And we're just going to jump right in and take a look at some examples. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project from scratch so you can follow if you want to. In a lot of my Nest videos, I always start with using the uh, Nest.js CLI, which you definitely should update if you haven't already, because along with the Nest.js version 8 update, the CLI itself also has been updated to version 8. So to make sure that we're starting our project in Nest.js version 8, it's probably best to also update the CLI and create a project with that. So with that installed, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put a new project in my desktop use the command nest new and we'll call this um, nest versioning. It's going to ask me what my package manager should be. I always select NPM. All right, installation finished. We're going to open this in VS Code. All right, so we got our base project. Installation's complete. First thing I'm going to do actually is install Swagger. So I'm going to do NPM install nest.js slash Swagger and Swagger UI Express. And the reason I'm doing this up front is so that you can see on the documentation as we create different versions of the API, we'll see how the documentation reacts to that. All right, with Swagger installed in the main.ts file, I'm just going to go ahead and add some base configuration here. If you want to learn more about how to do Swagger with Nest.js, I covered that in much greater detail in my crash course for Nest.js. Make sure to check that out in my channel. But beyond this basic configuration, we don't really need to worry too much about this. Just know that we're showing a Swagger doc on the base route of just slash. And also since we're displaying the Swagger documentation on the base slash, I'm also going to change in the initial app controller where this sort of hooks onto. So I'm going to give this a path of hello. All right, so why don't we go ahead and actually run the application via npm run start dev. And once your application is running, it should show up in localhost 3000 and you should see your Swagger docs there. And we have our basic slash hello here that we should be able to invoke. And it just says hello world as a response. All right, so from here, we have enough of a base to actually start doing some basic versioning. And again, you just need to be on Nest.js 8 and it should already built in there. You don't have to install anything else. You'll notice from the documentation that it talks about three different types of ways that you can do API versioning. We're going to cover all three of these, but I'm going to start with the URI versioning. And then we're going to come back and visit these other two and we'll discuss which ones might work better for your use case. So to enable that feature, it's actually really easy. You just go back to your main.ts and up here under the app definition, you just need to add app that enable versioning and then you need to provide a type. This type allows you to select those three different ways of versioning that we're going to cover. So like I said, we're going to start with the, the URI versioning type and we're going to see how that works. All right. So now with that enabled, we're going to go back to our app controller and we're going to start doing some basic versioning. So remember from our documentation, we have a slash hello route, which simply at the base responds with a hello world message. Let's update this a little bit to have an extra path in it. So let's do world here. And you should notice in the documentation in the Swagger docs that that should have updated to slash hello slash world. And it will work exactly the same as before. It will get you your hello world response. Now let's imagine for a moment that uh, this was an API that you built for a customer and it's been out there for a while and they're dependent on your API. But one day your requirements change and you're like, I don't want to respond hello world anymore. You need to change your, the way your, your controller reacts or responds to that request. That's when you might want to start thinking about versioning so that you can sort of provide support for the old way, but also start developing for the new way and then possibly communicate to your clients that, hey, you need to start switching over to the V2. So how do we go about doing that in Nest.js? There are a couple different strategies here. One is that you can simply create a second controller. So for example, in here, we're going to, if we were to create a, let's just call this app to dot controller dot TS. 
and I'm just going to copy this original controller and paste it over here. Right, so it looks exactly the same, but we're going to call this one app two, just so we know uh, the difference. Now, what I want to enable is the ability to show my clients that there is now a version one and a version two of my API. Well, first of all, in the app module, we need to add that new controller in, so we sort of need to uh, register it. Right, so now we have two controllers in the app module, the original controller and the app two controller. And just to differentiate the second controller, we're going to change the response here to be something different. Perhaps we want to say consider subscribing instead of a hello world. All right, so we have those two controllers, but at the moment we haven't actually specified from Nessus perspective which one is version one is which one is version two. All it knows is that we have two controllers and they happen to be under the same exact path of slash hello slash world. So how does Nest behave if you have these two controllers with the same exact endpoints? Well, the documentation itself kind of lets you aware that it sort of overwrites each other. So you only have one hello world in here. And if we were to execute this, we get back the first one. So it kind of ignores the second one. So what we need to do here is actually tell Nest which one is version one and which one is version two so that it sort of is able to make the two controllers be able to run in parallel, right, side by side. And the way to do that, one of the ways to do that is to change the configuration on the controller decorator here. We're gonna make this be path, but we're also gonna add version, and you need to provide a string here that represents what the, the version is for this, right? And we're gonna do the same exact thing in app two controller, except we're gonna say this guy is version two. And again, remember in main.ts, we added app.enable versioning of type URI. So let's take a look at what those changes results in. So going back to our Swagger UI, if I refresh, now it's able to represent that we have two versions of the same controller of the same path, and it automatically adds v1, v2 based on the version that we added. So I should be able to individually execute these. If I execute version one, hello world, I get back the original hello world. And if I execute the V2 hello world, I should get back, consider subscribing. All right, so pretty simple, right? That's pretty much the basics of it. Now there's a couple other ways that you can do this. Perhaps you didn't necessarily wanna create a new controller for every single version that you have. You know, that could be painful if you start going beyond maybe two versions. So perhaps you still wanna have just one controller, but the ability to still specify which methods are version one and version two. Well, Nest.js does also allow you to do that, and we're going to refactor this a little bit to pull that off. All right, so what we're going to do is actually go back to one controller. So I'm going to unregister the second one here from the app module. So we're back to just the original app controller. But within this, we need to be able to also specify what the V2 hello world is going to be. All right, so what we're going to do now in a single controller to allow it to have the two versions in this one controller is I'm going to add I'm going to add that second get hello from the second controller that we had earlier, but I'm going to change this to get hello too. So just remember to name it differently, right? And then what you can do is you can actually specify the version here. So you can kind of think of it like we're now configuring it at the method level instead of the controller level. So uh, this version up here doesn't even matter anymore. You can remove it. Now we need to remember to also add version two down here. Okay, so now we have just one controller with two of the same routes, but for different versions. If you go back to Swagger and refresh it, it'll work exactly the same as before when we had the two controllers, except now you have one controller, right? So real quick test, V1 responds with hello world, V2 responds with consider subscribing. So those are the two core strategies is you either make multiple controllers or you make multiple methods within one controller. How you decide which strategy to take is really up to your preference. I don't think there's a correct way of doing it. It kind of depends on your own use case. For example, maybe if you just have a small controller, it makes sense to just do it at the method level like here. But if you have a massive controller and there's and there's lots of methods, maybe a separate controller makes sense. Now I should also mention that there's also the ability for you to specify methods that uh, work for whatever version. So for example, if we had another method in here, and we were to say this belongs to slash hello slash like you can specify that this method does not have a specific version to it so you can add version neutral 
which comes from Next.js Common. And that just allows you to say that this is version neutral. It allows you to sort of, it doesn't belong to any given version. So if you take a look at the documentation, it just shows up as hello slash like, and it's able to return that custom string. And a key difference is it doesn't have that prefix or the version. It'll just be something that you can invoke directly without specifying that prefix. All right, so that's really versioning in a nutshell. Now, in the beginning, I did talk about two other strategies for doing versioning that we're gonna cover real quick. So let's switch over to header versioning and see how that looks. So with header versioning, basically it just means that you can provide a custom header to specify the version instead of you specifying it through the endpoint path. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna switch this to version type header and you'll see that it says you need to provide a header. So in here, you need to provide the custom header key that you want to use. So for example, let's do, I don't know, version, I don't know, version header, right? And really this could be whatever you want. And you'll notice with that change, the documentation is back to just the slash hello slash world. And it doesn't directly document the two versions. Now you might be wondering, how do you then invoke the, the two versions? You'll notice that if we try to just execute this without specifying the header, it's going to actually result in a 404. So the documentation starts to become a little bit misleading. And we'll talk about this a little bit more in a second here, but let's go ahead and find a way to actually specify that header. So if we were to use Thunder Client or Postman or whatever you like. So if I were to do a request to slash hello slash world, hit send again, we're going to get that 404, but if we were to add the header that we just made, remember we added a custom header here called version header. So if we take that and add in a new header in here, version header, and this is where we can specify the actual version number that we want. So if I hit send here, it's going to give me hello world. If I change this to two, it's going to give me my consider subscribing response, right? And if we do hello slash like, which remember is version neutral, we can do hit send here. And it doesn't, you don't necessarily have to specify that version and it'll respond accordingly. All right, so that's version type header. Let's quickly cover version type media type, which is kind of similar. But here, instead of providing a custom header, we're going to provide a key. And we're just going to do v, v equals. Now, how this changes how our request looks like is instead of that custom header, we're actually just going to manipulate the accept header here to say, okay, we're going to do JSON and specify the version. So if I do V equals one, and I should actually switch the, your, the path here to be hello world again. So hello world, JSON V one. If I hit send here, I get back my hello world. If I change two here, I get back my consider subscribing. So the V equals here is what specify is what's specified by the key that we use over here. So that's the third way of doing it. So at this point, I'm sure you're probably asking which of the three strategies should I use? Well, that's really up to your preference. But one thing that I would mention is you've noticed that if you don't do the URI, your swagger documentation doesn't react very well to it. It's not able to, for example, allow you to specify the different headers here. It doesn't even inform you that there are different versions. And real quick, there is a way around this. So what I meant with what I said is that it doesn't happen automatically, but you can specify, you can specify using a decorator, API header decorator from Nestia Swagger that you can specify that, Hey, there's a custom header in here. And here are the possible enums, the possible selections that you can use. You can even add a description if you wanted to, you know, perhaps you want to say, please select a version and that we should say this is required because we know it's going to 404, right? If it doesn't see that version. And just so you know, I switched back again to uh, version type header here, just as an example. And how this behaves in Swagger is by adding that decorator, it does allow us to say, Hey, there's a, there's a custom header here that's required. Uh, please put that in and select one of them. And you'll see that I'm able to then do that switch between V1 and V2 right in Swagger. 
So in a sense, there is still a way to add documentation that allows you to say, hey, there's two versions here, but it's a little bit more hidden, right? It's not as obvious as the URI where you see as a V1 prefix on the endpoint, the user kind of has to like go in here and say, uh, see that it's not required. Plus, if they weren't going through Swagger, remember that they're gonna get a 404 if you don't specify the version. So, so again, it's really up to you how you wanna do the documentation and how you wanna communicate to your clients, how the API model has changed. Again, a couple of different ways of doing it. It's all up to your preference. With that said, if you do a little bit of research on this, you'll notice that a lot of people have differing opinions on how best to do this. So it really depends on your use case, your preferences, it's up to you. I'm curious, what are you gonna use on your project? Do you plan on using something like this? Which of the three, which of the three strategies did you like more? I'd love to know in the comments, let me know. All right guys, so that's it for today. Again, really quick video, hope you guys like it. If you like these kind of videos, consider supporting the channel by hitting the like and subscribe or leaving a comment, whatever. Anyways, that's all I've got for you today. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you on the next one.